Hello and welcome to City Sports Roundup with me, Benjamin Nketia. Coming up, Ghana Football Association launches GFA Cares Foundation to support current and retired footballers. And Bayern Munich look into over 10 3 0 deficit when they host Manchester City in the Champions League quarterfinal second leg on Wednesday. Let's get to the details of our stories now. Now, Ghana's Black Princesses will face Benin and Cote d'Ivoire in Group A, whilst Nigeria, Niger, Togo and Burkina Faso make up Group B of the maiden edition of the Wafu B Girls Under 20 Cup of Nations. The first edition of the tournament is scheduled for Kumase from Saturday, May 20 to Sunday, June 4, 2023. The top two teams from each group will secure their place in the semi finals. Meanwhile, Ghana's under-20 male side, the Black Satellites, will face Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso and Niger in Group A of the Wafu B under-20 Cup of Nations. The pairings were revealed during the draw, which was done on Monday, April 17, 2023, in Abidjan. Nigeria, Benin and Togo will also square off in Group B of the championship slated for Cote d'Ivoire from July 7 to 21, 2023. The format of the tournament will see the top two teams from each group advancing to the semi-finals. Now, board member for Adriana Stars, Collins Atapoku, believes the club has acquainted itself well with the Kwame Chase Sports Complex following the FA's decision to temporarily ban the Nana Jaman Bedu Park. The two-time Premier League champions have lost just once at the new grounds in the cup match against King Faisal at the quarter-final stage of the MTN FA Cup. Speaking to City Sports on what he makes of the home switch with eight games to end the season, Collins Atapoku believes Park Wesi Fabian's quest to clinch the title is still on course. They have what it takes to win the league. You look at the sort of team they have. They don't have the usual big squad with players who are experienced or on the high side of age. They have a blend of youthful players who are hungry and have not even tasted the Premier League before or have not tasted success in the Premier League before. And that is what is driving them on this season. So you look at the team they have compared to six years ago, that was a far more experienced and all-round squad. But this time around, they have about 14 or 15 players who are high quality and they look fearless, not even losing their best player yeah. and talismanic scorer, Brad AJ, to Singida big stars in the at the end of the first round of the season has dampened their hopes. Not even being banned from the man has also changed them. So you look at the league currently, they've been competing since match day three and they've been on top bona fide since match day seven and nobody has taken them away from there. Now, Collins Atapoku also believes the remaining eight games of the season will be tricky for Adriana Stars. The league leaders will face reigning champions Kumasi Asante Kotoko in March Week 27 of the Bet Power Premier League at the Babayara Sports Stadium. It would be a tricky test for them against Kotoko on Sunday if it was like, say, three points because Kotoko would have had the better head to head. They beat them in Kumasi and then they've taken four points away from them. But it's eight points now. So at best, Kotoko might be doing someone a favor or trying to get themselves back into the hunt to defend the title they have. So, yes, it's tricky. I don't know, I have not fared so well in Kumasi in recent times. They drew last season. Uh, but it's a different ball game now. They are not under pressure on Sunday against Kotoko, the direct rivals. The beneficiaries could be Mediama. But the thing is that Adriana may have access to results from other clubs before they play Kotoko on Sunday because the game is in the evening and anything is possible. Now, Accra Great Olympics will play the remainder of their home matches at Sogakope after they had their request granted by the Competitions Department of the Ghana Football Association. The Daddy Boys, in a request to the GFA last week, stated that due to the high cost of unread matches in Accra, they would want the Competitions Department to fix their subsequent matches at their alternative venue instead. City Sports caught up with Communications Director for Great Olympics, Emmanuel saint Jose, who shed light on the new development. Now, head coach of Brickham Chelsea, Christopher Enning, has set his sights on finishing the season in the top four. 
following their 3-0 win over defending champions Kumasi Asante Kotoko in match week 26 of the Bet Power Premier League. The Brekum club are now just four points below fourth place with eight games to end the campaign. Now, Enin says the team will keep fighting to ensure that they end the season in the top four. Uh, we really prepared in this game because uh, many are thinking without a free MS shark, we are going to struggle, but we work a lot. Even yesterday, we were doing a lot of finishing and scoring, so I'm not surprised of the scoreline. I'm praying that it continues. So we really prepare, we watch their videos and we carry the day. Definitely, <laughs> the sky should be my limit. I'm still fighting, I'm still pushing. And the most important thing is, I'm so happy, not, not even really with the, uh, the point, but I'm really happy with the score because it, it, it became something that it's, it's only one goal that I get at home. So beating a big club like Kotoko 3 tells you how improvement we are. And I'm really grateful my players and then the technical team for the great work we did. You are watching City Sports Roundup on City TV with me, Benjamin Nketi. And when we return, we'll bring you some more stories. Welcome back. This is City Sports Roundup on City TV. My name is Benjamin Nketiah. Let's do some more stories now. The Ghana Football Association launched its foundation, GFA Cares, at the premises of the Ghana Football Association. Now, the foundation is expected to provide support to current footballers and retired footballers, as well as people who are not within the football fraternity. A five-member board chaired by Daniel Iwadako was inaugurated at the launch of the foundation. Other members of the board include Vice President Mr. Isaac Osei Yabwa, Frederick Achampong, former Black Stars midfielder Neo Date Lamte, and Foundation Coordinator Mauko Fraser Apiedu. Here is GFA President Keto Kreku speaking about the foundation. The GFA Foundation will also partner like minded organizations and institutions to deliver its objectives. Of course, and this is a surprise. The executive council members, committee members, staff, players, active, retired, team owners, sponsors, and partners of the Football Association will contribute, no matter how small that will be, their resources and time into the work of the FA Foundation. Monitoring and evaluation. A very rigorous internal monitoring and evaluation system will be used to monitor and track the impact of the projects and programs of our foundation. A baseline study will be conducted before project and program interventions, which will be compared with assessment records and end line study to ensure actual impact. And an external team will be contracted to conduct the impact assessment by either validating the internal monitoring and evaluation results or undertaking a comprehensive exercise periodically. Meanwhile, Executive Council member of the Ghana Football Association, Linford Asamoah Buedu, has lauded the initiative. I think it's a very good uh, initiative by the GFA because it's a uh, a product that we believe that it will help a lot of people, uh, especially uh, the old retired footballers, uh, underprivileged people, um, a lot of foundation works that needs to be given some funds to take care of them. I think this project will go a long way to help them. So we thought it, it is a good idea for us to have such a foundation in place so that everybody or any organization or even the fallen prayers or the GFA itself can contribute a little towards this foundation to, to help mankind. Now, former Ghana Football Association Executive Council member Samuel Odronyako is of the opinion that local players who receive call-ups for the senior national team, the Black Stars, must maintain their level of performance to secure starting berths. In recent times, many have questioned why local players struggle to break into the first team when they are called up for national assignments. Odronyako believes players from the local scene must be consistent with their performances when called up to keep their places in the national team. Well, it's about uh, performance. It's about uh, sustaining your level of performance. That's all. If you are selected from the local team and you maintain your form, 
and you are able to you know prove that you see what it takes to play in the Black Stars, I think you you will be you will be kept there. But when you are selected from the black from the local side, you get to the Black Stars, and you don't lift your game to you know fit into the professionals, those who have come from abroad or something, then you will be dropped automatically. So it's a it's a matter of maintaining your level of performance. That's all. Any local player who gets into the national team and keeps his level will get a selection. If you don't and you flop, you will not get a selection. Let's get our minds to uh, this Haas player who went, Banye. I think Banye was playing well when he was in Haas. But when he went to the national team, I think the level dropped a bit. That's why he was not used in the Black Stars. But that should not be something that should dampen the spirit of the local players. They must get their loins for a tougher battle and maintain their level of performance when they get into the national team. Now, Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp has described his size performance against struggling Leeds United on Monday night as their best this season. The Reds scored six goals from seven shots on target with Mohamed Salah and Diego Jota both netting twice. Now, Klopp's side has beaten Bournemouth 9-0 and Manchester United 7-0 this season, while the German believes the display at Elland Road tops those performances. I don't know. But, uh, okay, please me most. My, I'm sorry. The um, moment of the game, the best uh, I enjoyed the most was the 92nd minute. Impressive. Yeah. We had, I think it's already 5 or 6 1, and we will lose the ball, and four players chase him. Chase the poor, poor player from Leeds in that moment down. I think that's the basis for the whole game. Um, because gave, that gave us stability. It was, from a counter pressing point of view, definitely the best game we played this season. Um, in possession, probably as well. Being calm, prepared with little passes, preparing uh, direction in a really good way. At least three goals we scored after counter press, uh, which is obviously massively helpful. Um, and so. And then we were calm in the in the in the decisive moments to pass except to pass exceptional balls. I think Mo's second was um, super play. But I'm not sure it was Curtis to Robbo and then Robbo or, or maybe Joe. Uh, and then yeah, and then Cody and then going the ball to Mo. So that was really really good. A lot of good moments. Um, last goal, sensational pass from Trent and. Um, Darwin can finish it off. So, um, yeah, it was a good game. Meanwhile, former Liverpool defender Jamie Carragher believes only Kevin De Bruyne matches Trent Alexander-Arnold for defence splitting passes and suggests his new hybrid midfield role has produced even Gerrard-like performances. The 24-year-old was deployed in the central area for the second game running during the 6-1 demolition of Leeds and notched two assists against Javi Gracia's struggling side, having also teed up Roberto Firmino for the Reds' late equaliser against Arsenal last week. For me, watching him in midfield, getting more involved, running the game, I, I think this is almost perfect for him. We're talking about John Stones at the moment doing this brilliantly for Manchester City. Now, Trent's a better passer of the ball than John Stones. John Stones is great and has great composure on the ball. But in terms of defence, splitting passes, no. That's what this lad's got. And there's only Kevin De Bruyne in the Premier League who is better than him at what well, we've just, just seen. Turn. There is very few players in world football and I'm not saying that without thinking of some of the top players. The only player I can think who could match him when he's on the ball in that area is Kevin De Bruyne. That's his own as well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, Trent has got massive strengths. We know he's not the best defender. I don't ever think he, he, he is going to be the best defender. He needs to improve on it. You can't just say, oh, he's a great player. We've all got weaknesses we need to improve on. But Jürgen Klopp and Liverpool have got to find a way, as they have done for the last four or five years, as a full-back... But if that's not working this season, whether it's a midfield play, you've got to get that man. Your job as a coaching staff is to make sure he is on the ball in there consistently through a game and he is going to create goal after goal. Now, Leeds United manager Javi Gracia has warned his players they have seven finals to save themselves after Liverpool inflicted their latest home humiliation. The relegation threats inside lost 6-1 to Liverpool just a week after losing 5-1 to Crystal Palace, meaning they have now conceded 11 goals in their last two matches. Leeds are just two points above the relegation places and Gracia has demanded an immediate response from his players in their remaining games of the season. 
I suppose the the supporters need to see the team playing like we've done in the previous games and try to improve our level, try to get better results. This way I'm sure the the supporters will be happier with the team and the players uh, they need to, to work in all the things we have to improve because what we are seeing in this moment is not enough. We need to improve our level for the seven finals we have to play. This is the City Sports Roundup on City TV with me, Benjamin Nketia. We'll take a break here. When we return, we'll bring you some more foreign stories. Thank you for staying with us on the City Sports Roundup. My name is Benjamin Nketia. Let's get into some more foreign stories now. Now, the second leg of the UEFA Champions League quarterfinal continues on Wednesday night when German giants Bayern Munich host Manchester City at the Allianz Arena as Thomas Tuchel's side aimed to overturn a 3-0 deficit from the first leg. Ahead of the game, Manchester City midfielder Phil Foden was spotted back in first team training after recovering from appendicitis. Now, Bayern Munich players Sadio Mane and Leroy Sané were also available for training ahead of the game. In the other game of the day, Inter Milan play at home to Benfica at the San Siro and will be looking to increase their 2-0 lead from the first leg. Now, Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola has been speaking ahead of the game and he believes the row between Bayern Munich teammate Sergio Mane and Leroy Sané could make the side more dangerous coming into the second leg. Now, Senegal international Mane was fine and missed Saturday's 1-1 draw against Hoffenheim in the Bundesliga after hitting Sané following last week's 3-0 loss at City in the first leg. Absolutely. Sometimes you need that conflict to make the team more together. I'm pretty sure of that. It's not a weak point again. for him, it's a strong point against us, will be. I'm pretty sure of that. I know this club perfectly, few players of them. And I can imagine the situation against City. We play there, the players will do the, their best. The best performance for Bayern Munich will do on Wednesday in Allianz Arena. But I'm pretty sure it would happen here if the situation was at the opposite, with 3-0 down. Today we didn't win in some conflict. The team will be okay. It's a final for us. We can. I know exactly what we have to do, and they will do it. I'm pretty sure. Let's now get the thoughts of Bayern Munich boss Thomas Tuchel, who also has been speaking ahead of the crucial encounter for his side. I hope we used it against. Uh, I hoped we used it again in the last match against Hoffenheim, which we obviously didn't. So. Now the, 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 the case is already closed, subject already died, so I don't think that this will give us a huge boost. I know what he means, that like this kind of energy in a dressing room, it shows also the determination and shows like that, that it's alive, that the players are not happy, that the players like uh, are angry with themselves, with each other, like which, which can be used as a, which is also a kind of, of, of a form of energy. It was to a certain extent that we don't like. It was too much, but still, I see the point that Pep mentioned. We thought actually that we 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 turned it around. We thought we 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 had we turned around the momentum to to use it as 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 positive energy in our last match. Um, it's, it did not happen, <laughs> I have to say. So it. Uh, it, I don't think it will have a major impact now. It would be a miracle, actually. That's why it's different how to talk to the players. You don't have to talk about belief. After a 0-3, you need to be realistic. To talk about a 4-0 or 4 5-1, I don't know if this is appropriate. And after our match on Saturday, I don't know if this contributed actually that we are uh, or believe 100%. But we believe in us, in ourselves. Um, it's the second half of the tie and uh, we have to play two more halves tomorrow. If we manage to play a good half, first half, we can make it happen in the second. Everything is possible. We are aware of this. If the moment comes when we have luck, which we didn't have in the first leg, then everything is possible in football. But 
There are moments, periods, important decisions by the referees, small offside, maybe a shot on target lands into the ankle or is saved. So all these things come together. And to focus on this, I don't know if it's about that, but we need to find the belief in us. But it doesn't mean that we dream. We need to do something. We are responsible for it. Let's do some boxing now. And Ghanaian super middleweight contender Senna Agbeko is unhappy with the cancellation of his scheduled fight against David Morel Jr. The bout was planned to take place as the headline undercard of the Ryan Garcia Gavonta Davis fight night on Saturday, April 22, at the T Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. However, the Nevada State Athletic Commission did not grant Senna the license to fight Morel due to a medical concern after an MRI scan. Morel will take on 35-year-old 2012 Olympics bronze medalist Yamaguchi Falcao instead. Agbeko's camp has released a press statement and City Sports' Yari J. Minta has more in this report. Apparently, my opponent's team had already been talking to the new opponent because they knew they didn't want to fight me at that point. Even before we received the first MRI scan, my opponent's team were already out on social media claiming I have failed my neurological test when no doctor has stated that. It's clear this was already orchestrated behind the scenes and Morel and his team are hiding behind the Nevada State Athletic Commission to pull off this stunt. They are going with an easier, lesser-ranked opponent on short notice because they received reports on how well I was doing and how much of a threat I could be, and they couldn't afford getting their plans derailed. I'm just collateral damage in their big old game. Read the neurosurgeon's report and decide whether or not the commission was right. They tried to use my MRI scan which is more open to interpretation, but still failed because the expert disagreed, but they strong-armed me and went ahead with their plan anyway. Let it be known now that there is absolutely nothing wrong with me and my team and I will seek all means to find a suitable resolution to this injustice. Let's finish off with some basketball and Memphis Grizzlies center Jaren Jackson Jr. has stated winning the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year award has yet to sink in. Jackson Jr. won the top award ahead of Brook Lopez and Evan Mobley and has become the second player in Grizzlies history to win the award after Mark Gasol. Speaking in an interview after being named recipient of the Hakeem Olajuwon Trophy, the 23-year-old says he is focused on helping the Grizzlies get past the Los Angeles Lakers in the playoffs and winning the NBA title. Jackson Jr. led the league with three blocks per game and averaged 18.6 points and 6.8 rebounds this season. Winning basketball, it's uh, always trying to win. Um, you really put yourself second and everything that has to do with the team is first. Um, he always did that in his career, so even if he didn't say it, I could follow his career and pretty much see that he always wanted to play winning basketball and he was thankful enough to win a championship, and that's what I'm trying to do now, so I'm trying to get one of my own. 100% um, is something that would only take our team to the next level if I'm on that if I'm on that type of time, playing defense, helping everybody out. Uh, you know, whenever we're playing like that, team defense really helps us. It goes a long way. I have a kind of a co guy right here on my on my on my right, Dylan Brooks, who brings it every night, um, and we kind of lay the foundation for what we need to do as a team. So I mean, I definitely said that to myself, and I know he did too. And I'm glad we got one to the 901. Uh, I'm trying to put it all together. Uh, you want to be the best you can, put it all together, be a good all around player. You talk about the greatest two way players. You know they had to do a lot. Uh, you have to have that endurance to be on both ends. Um, it's really my pops. I mean, he had me doing all types of crazy stuff in the gym, like working on my hook that I never got to use in AAU, working on my three ball that, you know, coach ain't calling for the big to go shoot a three. You're supposed to be in the post. So, you know, now I get to finally use it. Uh, kind of more of a scoring option on this team, and it's all coming together a little bit. That's all for today's edition of City Sports Roundup here on City TV. For more sports, log on to citysportsonline.com.
My name is Benjamin Nketiah and many thanks for watching.